Hi everyone, um, my name is uh, Stani Kulechov and I'm the um, founder and CEO of Aave. So Aave is a uh, um, decentralized money market protocol run on the Ethereum blockchain and is part of the so-called uh, decentralized finance uh, ecosystem. Um, I have been building uh, uh, financial applications on, on top of Ethereum and, and uh, products since uh, 2016. And uh, today I'm going to give an uh, introduction into the Aave protocol and also how, uh, what kind of role the Aave protocol uh, provides in the uh, decentralized uh, ecosystem. And, and also uh, we will basically go through uh, what, what kind of uh, features and functions uh, makes our product very interesting uh, in, in for the uh, DeFi users and what will be the next steps for Aave uh, in, in terms of uh, the, the, the product it, itself and, and the governance of, of the protocol. So uh, to give a quick grasp on what the Aave protocol is, it's, it's basically a set of smart contracts that has been deployed into the uh, Ethereum uh, blockchain ecosystem. And, and basically those smart contracts has different kinds of predefined functionality. And this functionality is actually to create different kinds of uh, money markets. And a money market is a place where you can deposit certain assets into different reserves and uh, earn interest on those assets. So practically, uh, since it's on Ethereum, uh, we're supporting uh, ETH and uh, various other cryptographic assets, uh, including stable coins, which are the most uh, popular uh, assets to deposit and actually to, to borrow uh, as, as, as well. So as a, as a protocol, the, the idea of creating different kinds of money markets bears to the idea of uh, that you could use uh, when you're depositing into the, the Aave protocol, uh, you can use your deposit as a collateral to borrow some other asset, or you can delegate that, that uh, credit line to someone else. And as a protocol, uh, our goal is to create multiple different kinds of money markets with various uh, risk parameters that are governed by the, uh, the, the governance, the, the, the Aave uh, token holder governance in terms of uh, what, how, example of risk parameters are, for example, uh, how much you could borrow against a certain type of a asset that you're using as a collateral, uh, or uh, what kind of interest rate uh, a particular asset uh, could have, and, and, and so on. And another interesting feature is that uh, there's also possibility to take so-called flash loans from the Aave protocol. Uh, which means you can borrow without the collateral for one Ethereum transaction. Uh, it's quite a fascinating tool for developers and I'm going to introduce it a bit more uh, during uh, this talk. But in essence, uh, these reserves are always um, formed in the way that there is always more liquidity available than borrowed, which practically means that you could deposit today, uh, for example, DAI or USDC and, and then you can uh, withdraw that amount uh, from the protocol as well. And we have some called uh, in, uh, so-called uh, interest-bearing tokens. So when you deposit DAI, you get in return uh, ADAI. And this ADAI practically represents the balance that you deposit into the protocol. And we will go a bit more deeper into that functionality during this talk. And uh, Basically, those who are new into DeFi, uh, practically decentralized finance has been, um, there is a yardstick in decentralized finance which tries to measure uh, kind of the success of a protocol. And, and that yardstick is uh, total value locked, which means what is the, the amount of uh, value is locked into the uh, protocol smart contracts. So what is the, the, the sentiment that uh, the users are trusting the, the, the protocol and, and depositing funds there. It's not a, a metric for, uh, in my opinion, to measure success because many of the DeFi protocols vary quite a lot between each other. For example, Aave is a 
uh, money market protocol with borrowing and deposits. And then there is other kinds of protocols for issuing stable coins. Uh, might be, for example, um, automated money market protocols as well, uh, such as Uniswap. But the interesting part is that we launched the other protocol beginning of this year in January. And the growth has been quite uh, substantial in the sense that uh, we started pretty much from, from zero. And today there's roughly from one, one to one and a half billion worth of value locked in the protocol on various uh, assets. And what's interesting here is that actually it's not just uh, because of itself has grown, but the whole decentralized finance as an ecosystem is growing. There are more, more opportunities what you could do in the space. And for example, most of the liquidity into Aave uh, or from Aave uh, comes and goes uh, from uh, developers that are building various applications on top. And this is pretty interesting because Aave protocol is very developers and uh, developer focused protocol, protocol. There is a user interface that we are providing, but currently there are over uh, 50 different access points into the protocol, including uh, access points such as my Ether wallet or im token or alpha wallet, uh, just to name a few of them. And I think this is a in important factor to to kind of like realize because the the idea of those decentralized protocols is that they run autonomously, but anyone can plug in or build, build functionality on top of them and interact with the, the, the protocols. And that's the kind of like a beauty of, of uh, decentralized finance. And uh, before, of course, our protocol, we, we were building uh, ETH Lend, short form Ethereum lending, which was another peer-to-peer -peer fashion lending protocol that we, we deployed into the main Ethereum network during the beginning of 2017. And we built that protocol and developed uh, the user experience for, for a couple of years before rebranding to Aave and launching the, the Aave protocol. And um, yeah, so the main reserve is the, the most active one and it has the most uh, liquidity. And, and the main reserve consists of different kinds of uh, stable coins and, and other uh, assets such as the, the uh, uh, our, our native token and and also, uh, for example, Link, uh, ETH, and, and various of other uh, tokens that you could use as a uh, collateral. And uh, be, depending on liquidity that there is in, in, the, in the protocol, uh, that determines the interest rates for uh, depositing and earning, and also for, for borrowing. And for borrowing, you have two different kinds of rates. So we have the variable rate that fluctuates, so it changes constantly. But also we have so-called stable borrow rate, which means that when you take the rate, it's guaranteed for you for a certain period of time, unless there is uh, actually perpetually, unless there is one rebalancing condition, which means that most of the liquidity of the pool is uh, consumed and the interest rate is above 25%. So this is kind of a rare, rare condition, but otherwise it gives you stability on how much you, on the rate on how much you're borrowing. So in, in, in essence, you, you can either deposit and, and earn, or you can deposit, earn, and borrow something else and, and pay for that borrow. And that's the, 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 the main uh, functionality here. Then uh, we have I, the idea of creating new money markets. And one of the first proof of concept that we created was a Uniswap money market. It's a smaller money market because uh, it uh, supports only the version one of Uniswap and Uniswap is today in its version two stage. And that is something that we are looking to uh, su support. And this is something that the, the governance of Aave can actually uh, vote upon and, and create a new, new market for the Aave protocol. And the idea of the Uniswap money market is that you could use, if you provide liquidity to Uniswap, you could use those uh, liquidity provider shares as a collateral in Aave and, and practically borrow stable coins uh, and, and unlock liquidity in, in, in that way. And this shows like uh, a bit of uh, the amount of composability that currently exists in the Aave ecosystem and, and defined in general. Um, so we have various different kinds of uh, applications and 
uh, stakeholders, participants that are integrated, have integrated Aave or, or some functionality of Aave or are building something interesting on Aave. And there, there is quite a lot of things. So the, the ecosystem is quite big. And for us, this is very uh, important factor in, in the sense that um, as uh, the, the more access points there is into the protocol and more things are built, uh, the, the more uh, decentralized the whole uh, protocol becomes actually. And this is very uh, valid proposition of the whole uh, decentralized finance. So definitely the, the, the ecosystem has been uh, growing quite substantially. And you probably recognize some of those brands um, in, in, in the uh, slide that you could actually access Aave protocol today and, and deposit and earn, for example. Uh, and I mentioned about the, the A tokens uh, during the beginning of the talk. So A tokens are practically interest-bearing tokens. Uh, and that means when you deposit a currency into Aave, you get in return a receipt. And this receipt is, is the uh, receipt of your deposit so you can use this receipt to claim your deposit uh, in a later period of time. And in each every uh, deposit on uh, token, so whether it's, let's say, the uh, if you deposit DAI, you get a, a, a DAI. If you deposit USDC, you, you get a USDC uh, in return. So that's where the name A token has come from. And the interesting part of Aave tokens is that, that they are interest-bearing tokens. So uh, when you are uh, when when you are holding the A token, uh, whatever location it might be your cold wallet, it might be any your 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 MetaMask and and so forth. That token balance will increase algorithmically. So so in that sense the uh, the token balance just grows and, and grows as you are earning interest uh, from the protocol. So actually, the, the A tokens are showing you, you not just your deposit in the protocol, but how much you're earning all the time and credited that, crediting that those earnings directly to your uh, address. And that's very interesting because it's a kind of like a new way of uh, representing balances and, and uh, interest rate accruals uh, in decentralized finance. And, and this is something that many new projects are now looking into um, take inspiration from. And since you are actually uh, getting these A tokens and the yield um, in, in your wallet and, and no one can go in between um, the, your token and the yield that you're getting, it, it, it means that the the A tokens are, in one sense, permissionless savings accounts, and uh, in USD nominated currencies, since most of the stable coins are, uh, especially now that all the stable coins are in uh, USD format nomination. And what's cool about here is that if you are in a jurisdiction um, or in a region where, let's say, there is a lot of inflation in the local currency. You don't have decent yield opportunities there, or the banking system doesn't provide those opportunities uh, for some reason, or it's difficult to trust the banks. This might become quite important tool for access those kind of like a global savings rates. And this is very uh, big thing in, in terms of the fact that uh, uh, it, it really is permissionless uh, for you. And uh, the tokens do not stop increase in balance when, for example, you send your A tokens to, to someone else. So what, what this means is actually that if you pay someone in A USDC, it actually means that um, the, the recipient will not just get the A USDC, but also will get a, a, the increasing balance of that A USDC as long as it's in their wallet. So kind of like you're sent, you're using a payment currency that is more uh, that is more rewarding compared to traditional currencies which, which are bearing inflation and losing value. And this is pretty interesting to see how in the future it might uh, get traction in, in terms of uh, payments. 
And you can redirect the interest. And this particularly means that you could uh, hold the A tokens, but you could redirect the interest to your friend or, or, or to some other smart contract that does some interesting uh, functionality. And the A token holding amount is growing quite substantially in terms of treasury as well. This is a snapshot a uh, couple of months ago from, from the um, uh, Gnosis Safe um, multisig. So it, it basically shows that A tokens is uh, quite a good way to, to manage your treasury in the sense that normally you would have to put your treasury into work, but, but just holding A tokens that is already a automated treasury management. And this is quite, might be quite interesting to funds, VCs who are holding substantial amount of, of stable coins or other exposure uh, assets that, that are supo supported by the uh, Aave protocol. Another interesting feature we have is the, the, the flash loans. And the flash loan in, in, in essence allows users to borrow 100% under collateralized loans from the Aave protocol. So normally you, when you, you do borrow from, uh, from the Aave protocol, you, you deposit a asset to earn, and then you can draw a credit line of some other asset that you want to borrow. And in this case, you actually just borrow 100% under collateralized. Um, you could borrow all the liquidity that is existing in the, the, the protocol. It can be up to 1.5 billion. And the catch is that you need to return those funds in one single Ethereum transaction. Now, many might think like, what might be the idea here behind? Uh, pretty much when you borrow, let's say for one Ethereum transaction, it means that you could have multiple nested transactions in, in that transaction, which means some of those nest, nested transactions could be buying currency A from uh, exchange A and selling it the currency A in exchange B and making profit in this arbitrage, or um, it could be uh, a way to refinance loans. So for example, if you borrow from one lending protocol and you can't return the funds uh, uh, to that lending protocol, let's say for reasons uh, that you already spent those funds, a flash loan could be used to close your loan position in that lending protocol and you could refinance into another lending protocol and the flash loan is returned. So in that sense, you're, you're practically refinancing your loan without actually using your own capital. So it really reduces the upfront capital. One example is also the collateral swap. So let's say if you have a uh, loan that is backed by uh, it, it and it's in, it's in DAI, for example, or, or USDT, and then you want to change the, that uh, ETH position to Aave position or link position or whatnot. Basically, you could do that with the collateral swap functionality. And flash loan will be taken, the loan is closed and reopened again with the new collateral. And in between, the, the collateral is, is sold and new collateral is bought. So there is there, there, there's some cool functionality that the, the level developers can actually build. And I think this is going to be a pretty fascinating tool uh, in the future. And uh, currently from the beginning of January, roughly half a billion worth of flash loan has been issued. And the flash loan volume is growing quite a lot. And the core, cool part here is that the, the flash loan, as the flash loan volume grows, there is a fee actually, or a reward for the liquidity providers for rewarding them for the flash loans which practically means that they're earning the, whenever there is a flash loans, uh, the depositors are earning uh, more interest. And, and that is a good, good thing because it creates this kind of like an interest spikes uh, for the depositors for every block that there is a flash loan. And one of the biggest flash borrower or user of the flash loan is so-called DeFi saver, which allows you to uh, self-liquidate your MakerDAO CDP uh, without losing the liquidation incentive to the uh, liquidators. And this is a pretty cool thing uh, in, in that sense. Yeah, and one of the recent functionalities uh, is so-called credit delegation. So credit delegation practically means that uh, when you deposit into the um, Aave protocol, uh, and you're not borrowing, you just want to earn interest, you could delegate your credit line to someone else or to a smart contract 
which means in practice that uh, you could potentially earn more uh, on, on what you're actually borrowing now. And the reasoning is that 75% of the, the, the value that is locked in, in Aave is not borrowed out. And some of the, that value could be actually utilized for the credit delegation. And uh, it can be a simple transaction where you just uh, let someone else to, to draw the credit line. So, so let's say um, instead of you borrowing someone else that you, you, you trust, or you could make a legal agreement and, and borrow. So you could add this kind of a trust factor, or you could remove the trust factor and let a smart contract to, to borrow. And knowing that the smart contract has um, so-called like predefined functions that you, you know what the smart contract can and can, can do. And, and that allows practically to, to um, uh, uh, create, uh, eliminate actually the, the credit risk of, of this kind of uh, functionality. And, and it's pretty cool. And currently wires, YA link uh, vault where, where you deposit a link uh, actually uses credit delegation and they're borrowing currently roughly uh, 20, uh, 20 million worth of um, USDC from the Aave protocol, which is uh, quite cool, to be honest. And uh, last kind of imp important thing is that as, as we are creating new money markets, uh, safety is one of the important things uh, in, in, in decentralized finance. It's very important to understand uh, risk involves uh, before depositing and using DeFi, but also it is important to that, that when code is published into the, uh, deployed into the uh, main Ethereum network, that there is a lot of due diligence in the sense, but there's always uh, challenges in the sense that there might be some sort of a shortfall, shortfall event. Um, you know, it can be a bug, exploit or failed liquidation. And for those events, somehow they need to be covered or insured. And one of the interesting part of the Avenomics is that uh, we're using the token economics to actually ensure uh, those kind of uh, shortfall events uh, by two different ways. Uh, one way is the, the active method where the, the Aave token holders can stake into the Aave protocol um, safety module. And this safety module can be slashed up to 30% and uh, compensated the, the deficit in, in the uh, protocol. And if that happens uh, and that is not enough, there is a passive way of, of uh, practically minting new die with the protocol safety incentive and, and reselling those uh, uh, minted uh, Aave tokens. And, and there's a building backstop module that is placing a bit order on the slashed or minted Aave. So the cool part here is, uh, that the, 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 or actually the, the rationale is that the Aave token holders are making risk-based decisions over the protocol, such as, for example, what kind of assets are added or what kind of risk parameters are adjusted. And based on that, they're, they're staking and getting a reward for, for actually taking those decisions and also protocol fees. So what's, what's the um, idea here is that uh, as as the, the protocol grows and, and there is more total locked value, uh, the more uh, kind of like uh, coverage the insurance requires. And this hopefully actually uh, in incentivize uh, the, the token holders to cover those new markets and also make decisions that actually are uh, risk adjusted in, in, in that sense. So it's kind of an interesting uh, model that we uh, have and, and interesting to see how it uh, plays out. Uh, next step for the, 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 the protocol, uh, practically we're moving towards decentralized governance. We, we already had a token migration from, from Lend to Aave and, and basically the next steps um, is, is to activate the whole voting process on all of the decision making. And if this is something that you are interested or you're interested in governance tokens in general, feel free to participate at governance.ava.com and, and, and uh, there you can basically create different kinds of um, uh, proposal uh, well, discussions on various ideas, brainstorming, which will eventually, uh, if they're successful and there's a lot of attention become uh, 
um, proposal in this um, AIP framework, which, which basically means of improvement proposal and eventually can be even uh, voted and, and the protocol could be even that way improved uh, in the future. And uh, now we're working also on the version two of the protocol. Uh, this practically means that uh, there is multiple different functionality that we are adding, such as natively supporting collateral swapping uh, and also depth swapping and, and, and uh, plenty of other stuff and reducing the, the gas cost of the protocol. So it's, it's quite interesting. And this is something where we have finished our audits and, and, and pretty much looking next step as, as a test net. And of course, uh, new money markets is something we're, we're uh, currently uh, looking to deploy with the uh, version two. And if, if you're interested in, the, um, uh, in, in the, the protocol to build on top, you could go to docs.av.com. There's a lot of information for you. If you have some idea, uh, some new DeFi project you want to build or improve something uh, in Aave or the Aave ecosystem, uh, feel free to reach us out and we, we, we're happy to help to get you uh, involved. And of course, we have our Discord, avi.com uh, slash Discord. If you have any questions, you want to participate into the um, community discussions, feel free to, uh, to join. Yeah, uh, this is uh, our, our team and we're known as the Avengers uh, as well. And, and here's a QR code to our Telegram if you are interested in, in, in discussing there more as well. There's the Discord as well. And um, that's all about it. And, and uh, I hope you had a um, great time during, during uh, this talk and, and it gave you uh, uh, some amount of uh, uh, perspective of what we're doing and feel free to get involved feel free to, to try the the protocol and uh and also uh give us feedback and thank you so much and and hope you have a, a good uh, conference <laughs>